Hold on, I'm coming. Ada? Why are you here with that bag? Sister, I couldn't stay home. They are watching me. Come inside quickly. I told you to lie low. Why bring this here? My husband will soon be home. I had no choice. Please, just keep it for tonight. Wait, what are you doing? Jesu. Ada, you are supposed to wait. I couldn't. They were closing in. This girl is going to kill me. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create this type of animation for your faceless channel using Nano Banana, Kling AI, and Eleven Labs. Let's get started. The first step in this process is to create our script. While researching on TikTok, I came across an account that shares very interesting stories. One of their videos had about 10 million views, so I decided to recreate something similar. What I did was give ChatGPT part of the script and ask it to create something in that style. At first, it generated something too close to the original, which isn't what we want. The goal is to capture the essence of why that video went viral and then create something new. After a few tweaks and prompts, ChatGPT gave me this script. The storyline is engaging and has a big twist with four characters, the wife, the sister, the husband, and the neighbor. It also uses a lot of dialogue, which is why you see speaker zero, speaker one, and so on. Once I reviewed the script and was satisfied with the one minute story, the next step was to generate images for each scene. ChatGPT broke this down from scene one to scene seven. I also asked ChatGPT to suggest sound effects for each scene. That way we'd have everything we need to move into the next steps of creating the video. Based on the prompts I gave, ChatGPT provided each scene along with sound effects, which we'll use later in this tutorial. Once I had that locked in, the next step was to generate the characters. ChatGPT gave me a detailed breakdown for each character. The wife, a modern Nigerian woman with age, hair, outfit, accessories, and no expressions. The younger sister, the husband, and the neighbor. So now we have the script, the images, the sound effects, and the, the character designs. The next step is to design the voices for the characters. Since the script relies heavily on dialogue, I'll be using Eleven Labs. Eleven Labs allows you to create voices with emotion and set them up for dialogue. Once you log into your Eleven Labs account, you'll see voice design on the homepage. Click on it and a window opens where you can give instructions or prompts about the type of voice you want to create. For example, I'll create a Nigerian female voice in her early 20s and click Generate. Eleven Labs will create three voices you can preview and decide which one works best. Ah, uh, good morning, no. How are you doing today? Me, I'm just trying to... The emotions in these voices are really solid. Once the voices are generated, the next step is to create the dialogue. For that, I will click on text to speech. Clicking on text to speech opens the editor. Eleven Labs has different models, but for this project, I'll be using version 3 Alpha because it lets you add emotion tags directly into your script. For example, if I want a character to sound surprised, I just put the word surprised in square brackets. Let me show you. Click add a speaker, choose the voice you want. I'll use Niger female one, then type or paste the line. If I want her to sound like she's crying, I just type crying in brackets. It turns purple, which means it's recognized as an emotion tag. That's how I built out the entire dialogue line by line with the right emotions for each character. Once everything is set, just click generate speech and Eleven Labs will produce the audio. Now, whenever I generate voices, I notice the first version doesn't always have the right emotional weight, but the second attempt usually sounds much better. Let's listen to an example. Hold on, I'm coming. Ada, why are you here with that bag? Sister, I couldn't stay home. They are watching me. Come inside quickly. I told you to lie low. 
Once you're satisfied with the voice, just click the download button beside it and it saves directly to your computer. That's the process for creating the voiceover. Quick pause before we continue. If you're thinking about starting your own faceless YouTube channel, I put together a free checklist that walks you through the exact steps to get started the right way. You can grab it using the link in the description. It's completely free and will save you a ton of time. And by the way, if you're finding this tutorial helpful, do me a quick favor, hit that like button. It really helps push this video out to more creators like you. And it lets me know to keep making tutorials like this. All right, let's continue. Now that we have the voiceover, the next step is to use the image cues ChatGPT provided to start generating the characters and scenes. The first thing I did was generate the base images. Instead of generating each scene from scratch, I decided to first create standard images of each character on a plain background. This way, I could easily reuse and edit them later using Nano Banana Model. For image generation, you can use AI tool of your choice. Since I'm working with 2D animation and wanted a specific look, I used Mid Journey, but you don't have to. For example, I generated the wife character with an olive green background, the police officer, the husband with the look I wanted, and finally the younger sister. Once I was happy with all the characters, I downloaded them to my computer. The next step was to start placing these characters into scenes based on the cues ChatGPT provided. I asked ChatGPT to create image prompts for each scene and it gave me detailed instructions along with sound effects for scenes 0 through 7. To show you how I created some of these images, let's go into Design AI. I use Design AI in the, this tutorial because it allows me to create and animate images all in one platform using the most popular AI video generators. When starting a new project, I made sure to select the 16 by 9 aspect ratio since we're creating a YouTube video. Of course, you can pick any ratio that fits your project. For the first scene, I wanted the sister to knock at the door before the wife comes to open it. To do that, I needed to create a close-up shot of her hand knocking. Since this wasn't a full character shot, I just imported the sister's image and used it as a reference. In the chat editor, I typed in a prompt like, show only her right hand knocking on the home door. Close-up shot, 2D animation style. I made sure to specify that the style is 2D, not 3D. For the model, I tested different ones like Cedram 4.0 and Flux Context, but Nano Banana worked best for me. Once you select it and click Generate, it processes the task. Here's the one I generated earlier. It shows her hand knocking on a brown door and it even took into account her outfit and appearance to make it consistent. Now. Once the knocking scene is done, the next scene is the wife opening the door and seeing her younger sister, Ada, clutching a bag and looking worried. For this, I switched the layer back on for the sister's character and typed a longer prompt, a 2D point of view shot from the wife's perspective. Since I planned to use the second image of Ada, I added that in as a reference. Now that we have two images, it's important to tell the nano banana which image is doing what. For example, I'll write 2D animated POV shot from the wife's perspective, image 1. Then describe the action. For the sister, I'll write image 2 and describe her role. After multiple generations and refinements, I got a scene where the elder sister is looking at the younger sister clutching a bag holding the door slightly open to see who was knocking. That's the same process I used combining images and refining scenes to generate all the visuals you saw at the start of this video. Once the images were ready, the next step was to animate them. You can also ask ChatGPT to generate prompts for animation, but I already had a clear idea of what I wanted. The first animation I created shows the younger sister knocking then the elder sister opening the door and asking what she's doing there. There are two ways to animate in this workflow, frame by frame animation. 
using the first and end frame feature in clean AI. Let me show you the second method. Here's the image we're using. At the bottom, I'll click AI video and the slider opens. Then I select the model I want, Kling 2.1 Pro. Because it supports first and end frame animation, it automatically sets the image as the starting frame. Next, I switch on end frame and choose what I want the final frame to be. In this case, the animation starts with the hand knocking and ends with the sister opening the door. The next step is to describe exactly what I want Kling AI to animate. I wrote hand knocking on the door, then lowers. After a few seconds, another hand opens the door from inside the house, revealing the person on the other side, looking around nervously. For imagination settings, I left it at the suggested range, chose a duration of 5 seconds and clicked generate. Sometimes you'll need to regenerate the video a couple of times until you get the exact movement you want. But here's the result I got. A lady knocking, the sister opening the door and she looks nervous. Exactly what I was aiming for. I used this same process to animate the rest of the scenes. Some I built with the first and end frame method, while others I left as single still images depending on what the story required. Once the videos are generated, you can download them. Now that we have the voiceover and the video clips, it's time to put everything together. For editing, I'll be using CapCut. Inside CapCut, I imported both the audio and the video clips. I started placing them on the timeline based on each scene and how it was animated. I dragged and dropped the clips to match the flow of the story. It's important to note that the voiceover is what guides where each clip goes. Sometimes the clip is longer than the dialogue for that scene, so I simply trimmed it down by clicking and dragging the edge to the correct length. Once I align the clips with the voiceover, you will notice that the characters are talking, but the lips weren't synced. To fix this, I marked the section where the talking should begin and end, then right-clicked to select that range. After that, I exported the video and the audio separately, naming them appropriately so I could take them into a lip-syncing tool. Now I have two files ready, one audio clip and one video clip. The next step is to lip sync them. For the lip syncing feature, I'll be using Dreamface. It's been my go-to for months because it allows lip syncing for much longer clips. Most other tools only handle about 10 seconds at a time, but Dreamface can sync up to 10 minutes in one go. That's why whenever people ask how I manage long lip syncs, Dreamface is the tool I recommend. Once you land on the home page, click on lip you'll see different options like avatar and video. I'm going to upload the video I already put together in CapCut. Then on the audio, I'll upload the voiceover file from my computer. After selecting the audio, it loads up and since I already trimmed the exact portion I need, Dreamface syncs everything directly to that track. Then I just click generate. When the video is finished syncing, I click create creations to preview the result and then download it straight to my computer. Now that the video is lip synced, the next step is voice design and finishing touches. Normally, I'd go back into CapCut to add sound effects, but recently, Eleven Labs launched a feature called Studio. With Studio, you can import your video and design audio directly inside their platform, including sound effects and voice adjustments which saves me from generating everything separately and dragging it into CapCut later. So let me show you how this works. In the 11 labs, click on Studio. The interface looks like a fresh upgrade. It gives you options to create both audio and video projects. Since we're working on a video, I'll choose Video Project, then click on Add Sound Effects and Music. It asks for the video file, so I'll upload the one I downloaded from Dreamface. Once it loads, Studio presents your video on the timeline. It's not a full editing tool, but it feels similar. You can see your video and place sounds exactly where you want them. At this stage, I'll start playing the video and adding sound effects. Remember earlier when we asked ChatGPT to generate sound effects for each scene? That's where those notes come in handy. For example, 
The first sound effect is the knock at the door. Next, I'll copy the sound effect text that ChatGPT provided and bring it into Eleven Labs. On the right hand side, you'll see options for music and sound effects. Before we add sound effects, let's quickly add some background music because Eleven Labs now has an incredible built-in music generator. Click on music, then describe the type of track you want. For example, I'll choose something suspenseful and dramatic. You can also set how many variations you want and the duration. Since my video is about 40 seconds, I'll set it to one minute. I don't want vocals, so I'll choose instrumental and click generate. It creates three variations and once they're ready, you can preview them. I had already generated a few earlier and I like the first one. So I'll just click the plus icon to add it. The music imports directly into the timeline. From there, I adjust the volume so it doesn't overpower the dialogue. Then I move back to the start of the video and add the first sound effect. Click on SFX and you'll see a large library of sound effects. You can also generate your own. Uh, for this first scene, I want an urgent knocking sound. I set the prompt, leave looping turned off, keep the length on auto and adjust the prompt adherence to about 40 to 45. Then I click generate and it gives me three variations. I play through them and choose the one I like. Once selected, I click plus and it drops onto the timeline. From there, I lower the volume slightly and place it exactly where the knocking happens in the scene. This is the same process I followed for every other sound effect. If you look at my timeline, you can see multiple effects layered across different moments something that used to take a lot longer when I had to generate, download, and import everything separately into CapCut. Now, it can all be done inside Eleven Labs Studio. Another great feature inside Studio is transcription and captions. If you don't plan to edit in CapCut, you can quickly generate captions directly here. Just click on Transcribe and Edit Speech. Once it's generated, click on Captions and you'll be able to choose from different styles. For this video, I use the handwritten style. You can also click the cog wheel to customize fonts, color, background, and caption behavior. Now we have everything, sound effects, music, and captions. The final step is to export. Studio gives you two options, export as video or export as audio. If you're happy with everything straight out of 11 labs, just export the video and download it. If you want to refine it further in CapCut, export only the audio. I prefer exporting a single audio file rather than separating everything paragraph by paragraph, but you can choose whichever fits your workflow. Once exported, I brought the audio back into CapCut alongside the video. There, I added one final transition between two scenes and faded out the music at the end so it doesn't stop abruptly. After that, I exported the finished video to my computer. And that's the full process I used to create the video you saw at the beginning of this tutorial, from script to images to animation, voiceovers, lip sync, sound design, and final edit. So go ahead and let me know in the comments if you found this valuable. If you have specific questions about any part of the workflow, I'll be happy to answer them. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I post new tutorials. I have a lot more lined up for you. And if you want a deeper dive into how to start your own faceless YouTube channel, click the video right here. I'll see you there.